Hello and welcome to my setup guide if you're coming from Pro Tools to Reaper. Uh, this is my attempt to show the things that I've changed in Reaper to make it behave a bit more like Pro Tools. There's obviously lots of differences between the programs, but this has allowed me to keep uh, at least some of the keyboard shortcuts uh, so I don't have to learn new ones and it makes it easier to jump between the two programs. Quite a lot of information though, so if you know what you're looking for, just look at the chapters and that will take you to hopefully the thing that you're looking for. First off, there's two places where you make changes in a repo. First off is preferences, command comma of course. I'm gonna come in here, I'll make some changes in here. And then there's the actions here, show action list, which is the question mark, which is the shortcut to that. And this is where you set the keyboard shortcuts and actions. Spacebar and time selection behaviors, go into uh, preference, of course, and check clear time selection when the editor moves. And that way, when you make a selection like this and you click somewhere else, it loses that selection. And then in order to play the selection, go into uh, the actions, just use the shortcut that, which is a uh, question mark. And then do play selection, oops, Selection and we have custom play selection there, and I've just used spacebar there. And I'll come out of here, and then it'll play selection like this. So if I make a selection like this, and when I want to get rid of this, I can either just click somewhere, uh, or I can also use the escape key, which I think is the default one. So Reaper has a couple of different ways to uh, split clips or media items. So in order to make it into Pro Tools way with B. We need to change this slightly. So let's go to actions, show action list. And here we need to create a new action. Well, let's call that split using B. And here we need to get uh, split uh, play uh, cursor and then split uh, time selection. And we want the SWS, so this is an extension that, that you should install anyway. And we're going to choose split items at time selection if exists. If we select split items at time selection, we're going to get an error message every time we do this. So you want to choose this one. There we go. And then, uh, OK. And then we can just give this the key command B, like that. And if we now close this, so when we come back to the rent window, this works slightly differently from tools, which is obviously not surprising. So if I have a play cursor here and I make a selection over here, it will uh, make the selection, it will make the cut where the play cursor is because obviously uh, the play cursor is over a clip. So I would not have to put the play cursor here and now I can make a selection and it'll work. So this is slightly different, but the benefit of this is that I can use the up and down arrows like in tools. So get rid of that, press play from here, and then down, and then up, and now I made a time selection, and now B works like this. But I can also just click somewhere and make splits where the play cursor is. So, you know, it's 50-50, it's but it works for me, uh, at least for the moment. So a variation of this is to make sure that the playhead is always where the time selection is. So if we jump into the preferences, on the editing behavior, I can do move edit cursor to start a time selection. So I do this, I'll come out of here. So now whenever I make a time selection, the cursor will just jump to this point, uh, which doesn't really change the behavior that much. You can see that still, still does this thing which I have to make a selection for this to 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 work, uh, but I can still, if I click on the actual clip, then it'll work. Uh, and also, while we're here, I can show you how to heal stuff, like in tools. So if you select all of them, Command H, and it will heal it. Now, uh, this is slightly different when you set this up. We have to go to actions, uh, and then then we're going to go to heal. Now. In default, Command H is set to minimize, so you have to go to minimize, and we're gonna have minimize Reaper here somewhere. So minimize Reaper here, and then just turn that off, and then you can do heal, and then you just use Command H to do that. 
Okay, so marquee select and marquee zoom. So there's a couple of things here. So first of all, go to preferences and in by default, I believe that if you go to range view, you can see that marquee select items. But if we try and do this, then we get the time selection. So let's jump back into preferences, go to track and then default action here. Save this to marquee select items select like this. And now we have can mark you select like in tools. So for the zoomer tool, I've done this slightly differently rather than using F5. I'm using the logic approach with command option. Uh, however you do this, and there's a couple of steps that you need to go through. So again, jump into preferences and you need to set this in a few places. So if we start with um, the media item, so under media item, I'm using command option. Uh, so double click there and then set this to marquee zoom, just down here. And then we need to do this also in the track and the arrange for this to work. So if I try and do this now, okay, do a command option. I'm creating MIDI clips, which I don't want to do that with that command. So we'll jump into track here and then under command and option, uh, change that to marquee zoom and then finally go into the arrange view and again command option marquee zoom which is already defaulted to so okay and now holding down command and option i can basically jump in like this and of course i wanted to be able to zoom back so that's another setup so i'll go into media item here and go to left click instead of a left drag uh, and then under option here logic is command we're going to leave that on the option here, so just double click on this and then go to uh, restore previous zoom and then OK. And then here I can just hold down the Alt key and I'll jump back. So option command now, we'll zoom in and then Alt will go back. You can obviously use F5 for this if you want to do it Pro Tools style. -y. So when we're talking about the option key, if you are trying to copy a clip, holding down the option key and repo default, you can see that we're moving the contents, which we want to change to control. So let's just jump in here to preferences, media items, and then under option, we just can double click, copy, just copy, and then under control, double click, and then go to, and we're going to move item content, we're going to do ignoring snap like this. Okay, so now if I hold down the option key and then I can copy stuff and if I hold down the control key, I can move stuff. So that's handy. So uh, navigation in Reaper using keyboard commands is uh, obviously different, uh, but it's quite easy to set up something which is relatively the same. Uh, so here I'm using to jump in between the clips like this. And I can also use Allen apostrophe to jump in between the transient like this. Okay, this is pretty much all done in the actions. So I'm just going to run through the ones that we need to use. So to move between tracks, you want to look for go to uh, track. And then you have go to next track and go to previous track. And then we want to move to the different items. So it's select and move. And then we have item navigation here, select to move to next item. So I've just done, done command control and, and the normal ones. So to jump between the transient, uh, type in transient, oops, transient. And here we have move cards to next transient item. And of course move to previous. And they're also already tabbed there, but you need to add option tab. And of course an ELN apostrophe, and then that should work fine. using the arrows to go to beginning and end selection. So go, do, 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 do it. go to end of selection. And then we have go to end the time selection, right? Go to start, go to start. And then we have to go to start time selection and do left like that. Setting the time selection is essentially go time selection set. Um, and I think you need to do both start and end here. There we go. So set end point, set start point, and obviously up and down. And this works also when you're doing playback. 
So cropping clips can be set up the way that you do in tools, but it is slightly different in the way that it behaves. So it's trim to selection and then command T like this. Uh, however, if you don't do this, so it works fine if you're just selecting across one track. But when you're selecting across more than one track, it will obviously do all of it. So we can set this up slightly differently to make it work a bit more like tools does. So we're going to go to preferences, go to mouse modifiers and then media item here. And then you use the shift key. So let's double click and then go marquee select items. You can set it to ignore snap and go OK. And now when I hold down the shift key, I can make a selection here and then do command T and it'll only do the clip that I've selected. So we do this one down here and then Command-T. Uh, there are other ways of doing this with razor editing or something like this, but uh, in this case I'm just making it simple to make it behave a bit more like tools does. So the grid is snapping, so to toggle that we'll just do uh, toggle snapping and then we can set that to F4. Uh, we can also jump into the preferences and set change to how this behaves when we're holding down the command key so go to media item left drag and instead of copy item we'll just set that to move item and ignore snapping like this and now my snapping here turn this off and on and when it's on if I don't want it to snap I just hold down the command key and then it won't snap Trimming the front and end of the clip um, by the cursor is simply trim edge, so trim edge. There's some alternative here that you can obviously use. I've just set in two, so it'll just trim to the playhead. Toggle record, solo and mute are key commands, so action, so toggle record for selected tracks, shift R. And then you obviously change this to solo, and it comes up, and then mute, like that. Uh, toggle mute for selected tracks, so I'll set that to uh, shift M. And then you get this, obviously the warning, but I'm going to override that. And then now we can solo, mute, and record of course. So for track heights, actions, and then track, oops, height, and then we have, you set control up and control down. Um, split silence is dynamic split, so dynamic split, you set that to command U, and then select something, command U, and it will nicely split it like this. So works exactly like tools. Okay, so we have a clip indicator here. So we're going to set that up so we can clear it like in tools. So actions, uh, indicator, and then basically option C here. Uh, I think it sets something else by default, but this is what it is. So I've set it to option C, of course, come out of here, and then option C, and now I clear the indicators. So creating new tracks, there's two ways of doing this in Reapers. You can create one track or you can create multiple track. I have set to command shift N for new track and then shift N for multiple tracks. And the way that you find these in the actions is simply go action list and then insert rather than new track. Uh, so insert new track. And then we have multiple track here and command shift for insert new track. Uh, we can also, and the reason why I'm not using command uh, option shift here is because I'm going to use that for folders. So essentially, uh, if I go make folder like this, and then I can use command option shift N, uh, make folder from selected tracks like you do in tools, and then toggle. Uh, so toggle the uh, whether they're open or not is not to toggle actually, it's cycle. So if I do cycle folder here, so if cycle folder clips tracks. And then if I come out here, so if I now select these, uh, sorry, select this here, and Command Shift Option, and then essentially, now I have a folder track there, and then Command F will toggle the open state or cycle, as they call it in Reaper. 
So by default, Reaper does a fade in on playback start, which isn't working so well when you do uh, transient editing. So you can turn that off. So go to preferences and then audio, and then here you have tiny fade out on playback start. Uh, you can leave it on stop. It doesn't really affect editing with that. Working with uh, Rhea Peaks, which are the WAV files that uh, Reaper saves. It's, it's a bit different depending on how you work, but if we create a new project, and then I'm going to save this. Uh, I'll save this as Rhea Peaks. Like that. And I'm going to have create subdirectory project like this. And then we'll jump into uh, the preferences. And uh, in the paths here, we have uh, basically a general path for all of them. So if you work with sound libraries like Soundly or Samplist or whatever it is that you work with, then this might be useful. And then we'll just put it in one general folder. Uh, if you want to have them with the project folder, we jump to media down here. Uh, then I suggest that you have copy import of media files to project media, uh, which is not on by default, and then put a new peak files in a subfolder, which is also not by default. So if I then go OK here, I'll grab some stuff here, like this. Uh, let's set that single tracks. And now if we look in the folder here, we can see that it's created uh, the WAV files here. Uh, in a separate folder. So yeah, so it depends a little bit on how you want to work. Cool, so hopefully this has been useful. Uh, obviously this doesn't talk about uh, the extensions and the scripts and the racer edits and all of the cool stuff that you can do in Reaper, but at least it'll hopefully get you started going from tools to Reaper.